Good evening and welcome to another presentation from the Agency for Public Information, the API. Here is where you get the latest information on the plans, programs and policies of the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am Shana Daniel. Just ahead, this country's partnership with the World Pediatric Project and an update on the National Insurance Services were two of the issues addressed by Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalves during his recent press conference. We have coverage on that. And over 30 persons of the Executive Board of the World Pediatric Project is currently meeting in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to discuss the work of the project in the Eastern Caribbean. The details to those stories will follow News Watch with Nelly Skupid. Stay with us. Good evening, this is News Watch for Thursday, January 18th, 2018. I'm Nelly Skipid, thanks for joining us. The Ministry of Education, National Reconciliation and Information is hosting a series of national sensitization exercises to support an integrated operations framework for the early childhood development sector in this country. The exercises began today with an opening ceremony at the French's house and concludes on Friday, January 19th. Ethne Williams, Education Officer with the Early Childhood Education Department, in delivering her welcome remarks, said that children's early development is a strong predictor of a variety of later outcomes. It is well understood that the early years of a child's life from birth to eight years are critical to his or her future development. One of the government's EFA goals is the expanding and improving of comprehensive early childhood care and education, especially for the vulnerable and disadvantaged. Meanwhile, Cicero Simon of the OECS Commission and the Education Development and Management Unit of the OECS gave an overview of the consultation. Simon said that one of the goals of the Education Management Unit of the OECS under the guidance of the Ministers of Education is to increase access to quality early childhood education. One of those areas we are seeking, whilst we're seeking to increase access and access to quality, is to bring together those services, those key ministries or sectors who have been serving children birth to five years, same mandate, to bring them together to coordinate the delivery of services to children. So rather than health continue, they can continue operating, meeting just the health and nutritional needs of the young child, and education doing the same, and social, it's looking at child protection and whatnot. It, we, we, we're, uh, we've agreed with support from UNICEF, support from, the, from CARICOM, support from the foundations of the development of Caribbean children, that we need a coordinated, unified approach. The workshop is being supported by the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, UNICEF, and the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A three-day workshop titled Implementing and Monitoring the Sustainable Development Goals in the Caribbean, the Role of the Ocean, begun in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Wednesday, January 17th at the Beach Comers Hotel. The workshop is the collaborative effort of GEO initiatives, governments of the Caribbean small island states, United Nations agencies, and regional non-governmental organizations. It brings together stakeholders engaged in the implementation and monitoring of the sustainable development goals in the Caribbean small island states with the goal of lining these efforts to required ocean observations and to engage in the co-creation of the knowledge supporting these efforts. Speaking at the opening of the workshop, Minister with Responsibility for Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, the Honorable Sabota Caesar, on referring to the SDGs, said that there is a disconnect between the theory and implementation processes. And over the next few days, I want us to focus on how can we, in a real space, 
begin to apply the theories that we know to the problems to come about with relevant solutions. The workshop aims to facilitate a dialogue between the government and people of the Caribbean small island states about their efforts to implement and monitor the sustainable development goals and by monitoring this dialogue to extract knowledge needs which can then be related to data needs. The main outcomes include a workshop report summarizing the deliberations and a white paper detailing the relevance of ocean observations for the implementation and monitoring of the SDGs in Caribbean small island states. And finally on Newswatcher this evening, Effie Hazelwood, better known as Baby Bim Bim of Leyu, celebrated her 100th birthday on Tuesday, January 16th, 2018, making her this country's newest centurion. Effie was joined by family and friends and well wishes on her birthday. Also paying her special visit was Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, and Area Representative for Central Leeward, the Honorable Sir Louis Straker. They brought flowers and gifts and chatted with Effie on her special day. He sent you a bouquet of flowers. Yes. <laughs> Do you have to take my phrase that Randy's here now? Oh, you know. <laughs> On behalf of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we the members of the community service would like to present this lovely food and vegetable basket to you so that you can eat and enjoy and may God continue to bless you. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. This is where we end news watch for this evening. I am Nelly Skipper. The API presentation continues. Have a good evening. Two islands and keys are waiting to be discovered. Take a look at us now. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Did you know that the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines implemented a ban on the importation of styrofoam products as of May 1st, 2017? The ban on the usage of styrofoam for the sale or storage of food will be as at January 31st, 2018. Did you know? A message brought to you by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Commerce and this station. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, welcome. This is the presentation from the API. At a press conference held on January 15th, Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said that the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States has declared the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital and St. Vincent and the Grenadines as the center of excellence for pediatric care in the OECS. 
The Prime Minister said this is in part due to the remarkable partnership which exists between this country and the World Pediatric Project. Right at the moment, and a very important entity is in tongue and meeting here. I had an, an appreciation dinner for them last night at the residence of the Prime Minister. I'm talking about the World Pediatric Project. There were 30-something 30, 30 30 something of them who are here, la, are here at the moment. They are meeting. The executive board of the World Pediatric Project is currently meeting here. The International World Pediatric Project, they're also meeting here. And the local World Pediatric Project also, board also meeting here. Right now. And there's a team from the United States, along with our personnel here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yesterday, for instance, they evaluated 57 young people. The program covers critical health care for persons from birth to age 21. It's an amazing partnership. I don't know of any other place that you have a partnership like this. Out of these 57, whom they saw yesterday, 25 of them would have surgeries done this week. Forty-one of the 57 are Vincentian children and young people. Sixteen are from other Caribbean countries. This is a project where we provide host facilities at the hospital and we provide all facilities free of charge to everyone in this program so that the, the 16 who came in free of charge and all the operations which would be done and they stay at the hospital would be free of charge because we are getting a lot from these good Samaritan professionals from the United States of America. And what we, we give of the little that we have, which is the greatest hallmark of solidarity to our Caribbean brothers and sisters, and in this case, to the children and young people. I don't know if you know this. We have built a theater an operating theater, an additional one, down at Milton Cato Memorial, for use exclusively by the World Pediatric Project. Did you know that? We have equipped it, and they also have helped to equip it. In December alone, 14 missions came, one four, under the World Pediatric Project. I have said it before, and people don't look as though they listen to good news. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, children and young persons between the ages of birth and 21 years have available to them First world critical care. First world critical pediatric care, including <coughs> surgery, including surgical interventions involving heart surgery, 
and other complicated surgeries taking place right here at Milton Cato Memorial, you know. But you wouldn't hear that from those who just want to denounce the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. And where there are special cases of particular complexity which may require additional support facilities, they are taken to the United States and the treatment is also free, the transportation, the, <laughs> the treatment up there, whether it is in the Commonwealth of Virginia University Hospital or the hospital in St. Louis or the hospital in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia in Pennsylvania or in Boston. It is an absolutely incredible program. And it is a program like all other medical missions to our country, fully integrated into our health system. Fully integrated. It's not an addendum. It's not an add-on. It's not something ad hoc. Why that is important is because People who use the hospital, when the WPP or any other missions are here, they must know they have to be given the same kind of priority as other patients are given at the hospital. No, you don't relegate them. And given the importance of this, we have built, and we have equipped, and they have equipped. A help us to equip. A, an operating theater and you go down and I invite persons to go down and see how between the government and resources from the European Union and the Mustique Charitable Trust and the WPP itself that they how the, 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 the pediatric ward has been re refurbished and modernized and you'd see the standards there and that's why the organization of Eastern Caribbean states has declared Milton Cato Memorial Hospital and St. Vincent and the Grenadines to be the center of excellence of pediatric care in the Eastern Caribbean and I want to tell you patients come from Suriname from Guyana from Barbados, from all the OECS countries. And I say the treatment which they get here is free. World Pediatric Project started to operate in 2002. The total value of their, the contribution of their service thus far is $137.4 million for the Eastern Caribbean service. That's for everybody. For St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the value of their service is 65.4 million EC dollars. Now, in the case of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Well, overall, for the region, they have performed since 2002 9,726 evaluations. And they have done 1,139 surgical procedures. Of those numbers, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has over two-thirds of the evaluation, 6,640. And they have 80% plus of the surgical procedures, 853 out of 1139. And additional in the United States, there are 346 children been to the United States for advanced surgical treatment, and of those, 169 
are from St. Vincent. Now, the, the number I'm talking about in St. Vincent, bear this in mind, we also get the largest trunk in the United States. And for the 169 persons whom we sent there in the United States, the value in American dollars is 13.9 million US dollars. In other words, the government of this country has established with the World Pediatric Project a system of critical care from birth to 21 years. Critical care, including hospital surgical care. A first world service. In the United States of America, you can't get this service unless you have very good insurance. Here, we get it free. And bear this in mind. From birth to 21, the percentage of the population in St. Vincent is about one third. That number. So for one third of the population in this country, for critical health care, surgical care, you have first world care. And during that press conference, Prime Minister Gonzalez also addressed matters relating to the National Insurance Services. The Prime Minister presented statistics to show how the NIS moved from total assets of 218.7 million EC dollars in the year 2000 to its current total assets of 509.6 million dollars. I want to give some information from the NIS. I'm going to to give you the number for active employees, active self-employed, and active employers for the year 2000 and 2017. The numbers for 2017 are provisional. They're not going to go down. They might well go up. In 2000, the active registrants at the end of 2000 was 32,094 persons. At the end of 2017, it's 38,110 persons. You remember I said to you, and these numbers are confirmed by the census, that between 2000 and 2017 well, now, that the census took place 2012, and then because of some problems, the, number, the, the, the publication didn't come out until 2015. 2015-2016. Remember the fire and all of that. And I said you have about 6,000 people more employed today than were employed in 2000. And persons tell me, the opposition say you're talking foolishness. Well, I have the data because the, the, the proxy data for that clear affirmation is found in the NIS numbers. And you remember when you, you've heard it said, and I think somebody had some previous press conference had said to me, Prime Minister, you know the allegation is made that things are so difficult that businesses are closing. And my answer, my response to you, some businesses close and some open. That is the nature of the free enterprise system. That is the nature of private capitalism. Well, in 2000, 1,726 active employers existed. In 2017, 2,095. 1,726 in, in 2000 and 2,095. Those are active employers. And for the self-employed, Hans is asking, 
There's two se 277 in, two, in the year 2000, 1,092 in 2017. Well, it could be that in 19, in, in, by 1917, more persons realized the benefit, more self-employed persons, and say, boy, better I go and register for NIS. But the numbers for employees and the numbers for employers definitely would reflect a genuine increase in those numbers and not just the question of persons thinking that it is wise for them to get registered. The average annual wages in 2000 is $12,058. That's the annual average wages of the persons who are registered at the NIS. By 2017, it's 21,569, 9,000 something dollars more. You're talking 80 something percent more. Nine, nine, nine thousand, nine thousand five hundred and $9,511 more. You divided that over 12, thousand and, uh, and fifty eight well even though you do it roughly nine over twelve twelve into a hundred twelve eight ninety six so eight and ten eighty so you see it's eighty plus eighty something percent eh? um then Show you how people, and as the system gets more mature, people more protection for people. Two thousand nine hundred and forty pensioners existed. Now it's seven thousand one hundred and sixty-nine. I'm talking NIS, and I'm not talking public assistance. The total pension payments in two thousands was six. Point five two million dollars, and last year was fifty point eight million dollars. And the benefits, total benefits, because you know you have unemployment, you have um, sickness benefits and disability benefits. So, if you add those benefits to the pension payments, the total benefit payments in two thousand was eight point four seven million dollars, compared to fifty seven point one two million dollars last year. And just to remind everybody that when this system was introduced in 1987, the Labour Party government had brought the NIS bill to the House in 1984, but the elections were called in July. And before it had the first read, and before it, it was the reading was before the bill had passed, elections came. And it, it was introduced by the NDP in 1987 when the NIS started. But between 1987 and when I arrived in office, the NDP increased the pension at the NIS one time in 1999. The, under my watch, it increased in 2002, 2005, 2008, 2012. And there's an actuarial study, and well, let me not prejudge what will happen, and the, certainly the new Minister of Finance will deal with that. And the NIS is 30 years old, and the man who is talking here was the Minister for it for 17 of those 30 years. I just want to put a few things in perspective and this is an institution which now has total assets of the NIS today is 509.6 million dollars compared in 2000 when I got it at 218.7 million dollars And the 
investments in 2000 was 209.2 million and the investments in 2017 is 453.4 million. It's a it's a big and important institution and this is why at the start of the new year I said let's talk about it. We have to strengthen it further naturally. It's a living organism. That was Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez speaking at a press conference held on January 15th. Let's take a break now. We'll be back in a moment with coverage of an official welcome of the World Pediatric Project Board members to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Stay with us. Right now, in a country not far from our own, a child is gravely ill. Her mother holds the child in her arms to comfort her. But there's little else she can do. Her child is dying, not from some mysterious infection, not from some rare disorder. Her child is dying from a serious but treatable condition, one that could be managed easily if only the child's community had access to pediatric critical care resources. This child is not alone. There are millions more just like her because 90% of the world has access to just 10% of the world's medical resources, leaving thousands of children to die every single day for no other reason than where they were born. It's a problem so big, so tragic, so overwhelming that it's impossible to solve. Or is it? What if we could start the story over again? What if, right now, in a country not far from our own, a child is gravely ill? Her mother holds the child in her arms to comfort her. But the mother has hope. She knows her child will not die because her child has access to critical care resources through the World Pediatric Project. The World Pediatric Project empowered medical volunteers to visit her country. Doctors, nurses, people with the skills to heal and the passion to help. Working together, they saved the child's life. She returned to her family. Her world changed forever, for the better. But the story doesn't end there because World Pediatric Project changed her community too, developed programs to prevent childhood diseases and birth defects, established partnerships with the medical community, and built long-term capacity for pediatric critical care that now helps save the lives of more children. And those medical volunteers, their world changed too. They couldn't forget what they'd seen, how great the need was, so they shared their stories with their friends and colleagues who donated money to support the World Pediatric Project, sending out even more medical volunteers to even more countries, saving even more children's lives, building even more partnerships, and transforming even more communities, making a world of difference that all began with saving the life of that one precious child. Each and every day, the story begins anew. Somewhere else, not far away, a child is gravely ill, her mother holds the child in her arms to comfort her. But today, that child doesn't have to die. You can save lives. You can empower medical volunteers. You can build partnerships. You can transform communities. You can join the World Pediatric Project. And you can heal a child and change the world. Welcome back. You're viewing a presentation from the API. The executive board of the World Pediatric Project is meeting in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to discuss the work of the project in the Eastern Caribbean and other matters relating to the project. They will also look towards identifying areas for development and ways to keep the project moving forward. The team was accompanied by doctors who, during this week, will perform at least 26 pediatric surgeries. On Sunday, January 14th, Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez and Mrs. Eloise Gonzalez hosted a dinner at the official residence of the Prime Minister to welcome the WPP Executive Board. We have more in the following report. 
A brief ceremony was held prior to the dinner where Minister of Health, the Honorable Luke Brown, welcomed the Executive Board and thanked the WPP for their work in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the significant contributions the project has made to healthcare in the country and in the region. We have some persons who have distinguished themselves in various fields with us this evening. You, you take, for instance, Mrs. Mary Davis. You've already heard when uh, Nika was giving an introduction that she presides essentially over a very large clinical enterprise in the United States of America. To the point where I was asking her about the extent of her involvement, and she said that just in terms of the clinical component of things, the, she supervises a budget of around 3.7 billion US dollars annually. And that does not have anything to do with the university component. And uh, I was thinking for a moment before I asked that question that we might be able to lower her to give us some assistance in St. Vincent. But, but obviously we operate on too small a scale <laughs> for her taste. But nonetheless, she is given good service in the capacity that she serves and she is here to, to be with this team on this occasion and to help us out. Deborah. Deborah. Mm -hmm. So, the World Pediatric Project. I don't think that there's any need to stress the significant contribution that the World Pediatric Project continues to make to healthcare in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And uh, the way in which we have been able to take care of so many ailments and conditions that we otherwise would not have been able to address because of our position as a country of limited resources, including healthcare resources. We are indebted immensely to the World Pediatric Project for allowing our country to be able to get to the position of being able to provide critical surgical care for 100% of Vincentian's, Vincentian children who need it. That is something that we're here to celebrate tonight. This dinner is in part an expression of gratitude on behalf of us as Vincentians and also on behalf of those who have benefited directly from the Vincentians in general and in particular those who have benefited from the surgeries that have been offered. And the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has been a faithful partner with the World Pediatric Project over the years. Our partnership began around 2002 and continues to this day. There have been thousands upon thousands of evaluations. Hundreds of children receive surgeries here. Several more have been abroad for surgical attention. I had the opportunity last year, around February, to travel to Virginia and to see how things are set up there and also to speak at the World Ambassador Society meeting and to see how this organization is essentially going to every extreme to make sure that they don't only consolidate the position in relation to what they do in St. Vincent but extend it to other countries of the OECS is remarkable. I'd just like to thank them on behalf of the government and of course the Prime Minister is due to make some remarks so he would do it in his own right as well for what you've been able to do for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It means a lot for us. It means a lot for the children in the Eastern Caribbean who, when they didn't have anywhere to turn, who anywhere else to turn, were able to turn to you. So we support the ongoing rollout of the World Pediatric Project program in this country, including its vision to make sure that all children in the OECS access care and we reflect and what you have done for saving lives and your unparalleled generosity on this occasion before our meal. Thank you very much. Deborah Davis, CEO of the Virginia Commonwealth Hospital, thanked the government for the continued support to the project. It's from Johns Hopkins, there are other institutions um, in the states that are sending surgical teams. And none of this really would be possible without the government's cooperation. So we really are very, very thankful for all of the efforts on behalf of the members of the government. 
and I'll tell you what I saw today was inspirational. It, it's amazing what can be done when people are determined to make a better life for our children no matter where they reside. So again, I just personally want to thank you on behalf of my colleagues um, and we look forward to continuing to make every child have accessible health care. Thank you. Susan Rickman, CEO of the World Pediatric Project, spoke of the importance of the work of the WPP and the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. If you'll bear with me, there's like a few facts that I just really want to share with you of why it's so important that we're here tonight and why it's so important that we do what we do in partnership with the St. Vincent Governor, uh, government. In 2010, 30 3% of all deaths worldwide were from conditions needing surgical care. More deaths than HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria combined. So in the whole global health area that we're in, it's like they're shifting from individual diseases to realize, and it's a lot of it's because we've done such a great job in global health, to now realize access to surgical care is paramount that we must address. It is estimated that in lower and middle income countries, like St. Vincent, will have losses in economic productivity of up to $12.3 trillion in the next 15 years due to lack of access to surgical care not being addressed. It, it could reduce annual GDP in a country by about 2%, which is massive. So when it comes to our most precious access of children, St. Vincent and WPP are literally on the cutting edge of what's being, do, being done for access to surgical care. I can tell you that firsthand, we are. In fact, through our 2023 transformation plan, target one is every child in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Eastern Caribbean will have access to pediatric advanced diagnostic and surgical care because nothing less is not acceptable. So we truly, through this partnership that we built, and so much it is the, pri the Rotary Clubs and the private, but I cannot say enough about how this government has come together to where they even dedicated an operating theater. That was, an, uh, that was a, a tremendous investment of what they gave so that we can increase the number of teams that we can meet the need. So this true partnership, I all ask of everybody here, and we have a representation here from Mystique, charitable trust and what the people on Mystique have done and Diane Wilson and all, we ask you to join us because these children matter and we have to keep going and we have to realize these goals. It's just critically important that we do and stay focused on what we need to do. So I personally want to thank everybody in here because I see so many faces in here I know that have been part of what we've done, um, that have been supporters of the organization and those that do you not if you don't do anything but gossip about us, <laughs> get out there and tell us what this organization and this government is trying to do, not only for St. Vincent, because this Prime Minister from day one has said every child in the Caribbean is, is, is our child. So you just bring them on. So I personally want to thank all of you, and it's just a complete joy for me to be here, and I'm a physician citizen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, in delivering remarks, called the World Pediatric Project the most significant medical intervention in the delivery of hospital services for critical health care in St. Vincent and the Grenadines since independence of 1979. This project, we have no, we have been declared because of WPP, we have been declared by the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, which is a sub-regional grouping of six independent countries of the Windward and Leeward Islands and three British Overseas Territories. <coughs> that the WPP, that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has been recognized by the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States as the, sec as the center of excellence for pediatric care. And as we know that at the hospital, 
the pediatric wing has been reconfigured, upgraded, modernized through the efforts of WPP, some assistance from the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, some European Union funds, and assistance from the Mustique Charitable Trust. And one of the things which we have done is to have an operating theater dedicated entirely to WPP. Persons may say, well, you're going to dedicate an operating theater for persons who come here a few times a year? Well, you'd be mistaken. In 2017, WPP came here on 14 occasions to do assessments of patients and on almost every occasion they also did surgical work. You know, the policy of the government the simple policy is that the WPP, like other medi visiting medical missions, must be integrated in our national health system. It's not an addendum. It's not an add-on. It is not something which is ad hoc. It is integral to the delivery of health services, including hospital services and critical care in this case for children from birth to 21 years of age. And when it means integrated, it means from the top. In the Eastern Caribbean, since 2002, the WPP has provided service amounting to 137 million Eastern Caribbean dollars, or 50.8 million US dollars. They have performed 9,726 evaluations in the Caribbean, in the Eastern Caribbean region, and, and there are 10 countries really, Suriname, Guyana, Barbados, and seven countries in the Organization of American States. 10 countries with a population of about 2 million. And we have had 9,726 evaluations over this 17-year period. And the procedures performed in the region, here in St. Vincent, 1,139. Of that number, St. Vincent and the Grenadines had by far most of the consultations two-thirds actually, 6,640, and they have had almost 80% of the surgical interventions, 853 out of 1,139. And in addition, in the United States, we have had 346 surgical procedures in the United States under the WPP, of which number 169 are from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Incidentally, those 169 has a value in US dollars of $13.9 million in terms of medical care. Just think of 
those numbers. We are not adding the numbers additional to sit from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That is to say, what we put into it. It's not necessary for us to add those numbers. I want to just speak of WPP numbers, their own contribution. And overall, of the, the 50 million, 50.8 million US, almost 25 million US, or 65.4 million Eastern Caribbean dollars. That's the direct contribution in St. Vincent and Grenadines by WPP. It is extraordinary. <laughs> and we are going towards transformation 2023. And Suzanne spoke about that. And you have come and you are doing. You are the good Samaritans. Thanks very much. From the bottom of my heart. The, I've met families and children who have had their lives transformed by the World Pediatric Project. It is very touching. And Luke Brown is right. Since independence in 1979, whatever all the fantastic things we have done, fantastic things we have done for critical hospital care, there has been no intervention as significant in its impact. in the area of critical hospital care, and in this case for children, like the World Pediatric Project, since independence in 1979. <laughs> we have asked Deborah to lend us somebody to come down to help us to put together chief executive officer structure for the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital because it has grown too large for the colonial structure which has been having additions and you know it looks ramshackle in its administrative apparatus and Luke if we get somebody from Virginia who can help us clear our thoughts and we can see if by June we can somehow install a chief executive <laughs> officer I'm not asking I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm asking for somebody like yesterday to come and help us to clear the pathway to assist us in putting this thing together for June. Thank you very much again and God bless us. The World Pediatric Project has teams in St. Vincent and the Grenadines each month with varying specialities delivering life-changing surgeries not only to Vincentians but to citizens of the Eastern Caribbean. And that is how we end this evening's presentation from the Agency for Public Information. Thank you very much for viewing. We invite you to join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. and Saturday afternoons at 5 for the presentations from the API. Until next time, I am Shana Daniel. Good night and God bless.